So now we're going to switch from Dr. Spring to our final speaker, Dr. Allender. Dr. Allender is Professor of Public Health and Founding Director of the Global Obesity Center at Deakin University, a World Health Organizing Collaborating Center for Obesity Prevention since 2003. Please join me in welcoming Dr. Allender. Thank you very much for the introduction and just checking my slides uh, coming across. Yes, they look great. Fantastic. Thank you. Um, thank you very much for the opportunity to talk to the group. Um, it, it's a, a different way to do this, but I, I'm very, very pleased to have the opportunity. I think what I'm going to talk about will fit very nicely with the other sessions, and I've been pleased to see so many of our collaborators as uh, presenters in different parts of this workshop. And I think probably collaboration will be one of the key points I'd like to make. And I think the previous speaker talking about scale, but no engagement is a really useful uh, turning point or lifting off point for us. I do just want to make a few disclosures. Notably, we have invented some software called Sticky that I'll show you and several others that are listed there. On the top left just shows where some of our projects are, the collaborations we've got around the globe. We work in around about 30 countries uh, through both the WHO World Health Organization and several other partnerships, including the EU. What I'm gonna talk about this morning will be largely what we've learnt from the trials that we have run in Southeastern Australia uh, in Victoria, which is the state highlighted here in Canberra, which is the Australian Capital Territory here, and in southwest Sydney, Campbelltown, um, which is highlighted in blue. What I'm showing here is the state of Victoria, which is in Australia, 7 million people, and the shaded areas uh, are, represent local government authorities or municipal areas, and each of the shaded areas are communities who are partners in one of our um, community-based obesity prevention trials. So our coverage is around about half of the state. The blue shaded areas represent intervention communities and the orange shaded areas represent comparison or control communities for our trials. What's probably really important to say is that the trial design we quite often use is known as the step wedge cluster randomised trial, which means that some communities are active at one point and then the remaining communities become active later on. In the trial design that we use, um, we're building on a history of 20 years of community-based intervention. And there's a few really important things to say here, I think. And, and one of the first is that childhood obesity is preventable and proven to be preventable. And there are several trials, I've just shown the graphics from them on the right here that are successful prevention trials run in Australia. Um, and they've been run at all sorts of different levels of childhood. So while, while I say preschool, primary, middle and secondary, that's the age group that's been targeted, but in fact, the intervention, um, the unit of intervention is the community itself. I, I echo the need for multi-strategy and multi-level, and, and I'll show you how we achieve that in a moment, but I'll also make the point that more action is not necessarily ideal, but more than one action is. What we've identified from these trials is implementation is quite often difficult. It takes a long time to get engagement with community, a long time to get organised, and then a long time to get action happening. And one of the things we've done is spend a lot of time designing the tools and techniques to help communities get active in a far quicker manner in terms of obesity prevention activities. We also identified there are several issues with sustainability. So typically these programs would be run with ring fenced funding, a year to get organised, two years to run the trial, a year to find out whether it worked. And in Australia, four years is in, in some periods of time, three prime ministers, you know, the political stability may not be as we'd like it and expecting some sort of sustainability when it takes us 18 months to give the communities an answer as to whether something is working is probably expecting too much. So that led us to understanding we needed to make sense of the complexity of the conditions for each community. So each of these communities are different. Their contexts are different. Socioeconomic status is different. The number of people living with obesity is different. The systems and structures in place differ from community to community, but they also have similarities. And, and one of the missions we've taken on is to ask the question, how do we give communities the tools and techniques to address the complexity as part of the response to obesity? And one of the other key things that stands out in, in the work that we've done is that local ownership and leadership is critical. And I'll use the word community a lot. 
a federal cabinet, uh, a senate, maybe a community, just as much as a local mothers group, maybe a community, or a school group, maybe a community. So I'm, I'm using community as a group of people with a like-minded interest. I'm showing you what at the end of this workshop will obviously look like a very linear model of the way that we do the work, and I'm doing that deliberately to make it, uh, this is usually for funding bodies to make it easy to access, but in fact, we use a non-linear process. But we typically begin with best available data, um, so either monitoring of, of childhood heights, weights and behaviours or best available data. We work with a catalyst in each community as a setup piece, so somebody who's well connected in a particular community that wishes to do the work and in a community that's ready to do the work. <clears throat> We work with them to engage leadership and we use techniques particularly from system dynamics and group model building, which I'll show you in a moment, to build a shared understanding of the complexity of um, the causes and outcomes of overweight and obesity in, in each community. We provide the evidence base and work with that community to understand how that evidence might inform action in that community and then support that community in an ongoing way in terms of um, maintaining momentum. Really our role is above and below that central figure where we're deliberately um, helping the community build its capacity, providing tools and resources and then providing a, a research function to feed information back into the community at each of these stages to optimise their response. Now forgive this picture. This is a causal loop diagram um, for uh, Campbelltown in southwest Sydney, and it's, it's not intended to be read by this group, but this is uh, 200 community leaders coming together um, for a two-hour session answering the question, what are the causes and outcomes of overweight and obesity amongst the children in Campbelltown? It's colour-coded by the area of interest, so each of these might be considered subsystems around physical activity, nutrition, um, health and knowledge and education and social determinants of health. And when we talked a moment ago about multi-layer and multi-action, what really happens here is that the community themselves can start seeing where they best fit into a response. So one of the set steps we take is to say, well, if this is how the whole problem looks to the community, this is the evidence base about what we know, how and where do you fit as a community leader in uh, responding to the challenges of obesity. And that may be in the social determinants of health, that may be in perceptions of safety, that may be um, in nutrition education, that may be as a supermarket owner and the way that you, you offer food. And what we see, particularly in Campbelltown, but in all our interventions, um, is the ability to track actions. So at the three month point, having worked with them using uh, causal loop diagramming, group model building and participatory approaches, these hollow boxes around the outside represent some of the actions that have been taken to begin addressing these issues. And at three months active, the community um, had several actions just getting on their feet. And at the uh, two year mark, there were 63 actions still active uh, at different parts of the community, different community leaders, different community members, addressing multiple parts of the system as far as it, it, it pertains to the causes of overweight and obesity. And these actions operate at multiple levels. There are individual actions, there are organisational level actions and there are policy actions. And perhaps the other most important thing to say, are these are actions that the community see as both important but also within remit, interest and capacity. Um, this is the software we invented, Sticky, and we invented this to make facilitating this process possible and easy for anybody. So we, we've trained about 2,500 people now in being able to do this work in their communities themselves, track, trace and see how things are working. And what we're also able to do, the round circles here represent each of the actors, each of the um, stakeholders or community members who have taken responsibility for a particular action which affects a particular part of the system. I'm showing this for a couple of reasons. This is just a sub part of, of some of the actions, but what you can see are these connections between actors which represent new connections where they've joined together with a new focus on a particular set of actions to try and improve the health of children in their community. Uh, I'm very pleased to have been presenting this at the end of this series of workshops because there's a lot of techniques, tools and theory that you will have had in the previous sessions that I'm skating over very quickly. But this work I'm showing you is heavily informed by group model building from the system 
dynamics tradition. Um, and one of the things we're also able to do is start looking at the number of actions that are available. So in some of our trials in Western Victoria, uh, this community had more than uh, 400 actions active at any one time and around about three quarters of those related specifically to food and beverages. We found this was a really positive outcome given the evidence we were presenting emphasised the need to address food. But what you can also see here is the ability for the community to make some decisions about where their effort was going and whether this was the right place for that to be and, and where their priorities needed to be. We run a traditional trial design alongside this where we have an intervention and comparison groups and we do see significant improvements in active transport, fruit and vegetable consumption, water consumption and sugary drink consumption relative to um, usual practice. And we also are beginning to see fairly consistent reductions in overweight and obesity prevalence in the first two years between our trials. So three to five percent is a fairly usual reduction we're starting to see when we run these trials. We have seen some communities with a 9% reduction in two years and others with less, but, but on average a 4% reduction. It seems about uh, right, although we are still somewhat concerned about what happens after that initial two-year period. Um, we also see significant improvements in health-related quality of life amongst these children, particularly physical, psychosocial health and overall quality um, of life, and we are seeing longer-term intervention effects, particularly around behaviours. So I, I really have tried to introduce quite a lot in quite a short period of time, and so this is not intended to be read now but <laughs> for later. And what I'm hoping to show here is, is we are using a whole range of different techniques that you will have been introduced to over this workshop that um, take some angle on trying to understand complexity, and I just want to point to a few of those. So we do um, use group model building, social network analysis, agent-based modelling, and then there's a whole range of approaches to both evaluation and then the combination of these methods. And, and looking down that left-hand column, you will see many of the presenters from earlier today and earlier in the workshop here, and, and we're incredibly grateful for those collaborations and the things that we're learning together. Thank you very much. Oh, I should point to one more thing. If I don't, can I just point everybody to the Twitter addresses on the right-hand side? I'd be grateful for a tweet. Thank you very much.